What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Spencer. Taking a look at my Utopia deck. Uh, this is an, a deck I have explored in a really long time. Uh, I was playing Math Mech Circular. It's like it was literally one of the greatest level four monsters ever made, just in terms of its generic ability. It's unfortunate that it was banned, so kind of have to go back to the drawing board a little bit. And I'm pretty happy with what I've come up with. I'm gonna go over the deck profile. It seems very chaotic, and in a way, it is, but. It does kind of work, and I'll show you kind of all the different ways that the deck kind of functions. This is something I've been playing for a long time, so this deck list has been shaped over like the course of years. Starting off with a little mini Kashtira engine. So obviously Fenrir is a two-fold system, and you could expand on the Kashtira engine, to be honest with you. If you go for Unicorn, Unicorn can search like Theosis, and then you know you can go for Fenrir. Fenrir can then search Riseheart. It's a level four it's a free level four extender so this ends up being good going first or second it always is but it's a little bit better uh, in this deck because you do just get a level four body which is this is a rank four deck so that's kind of the whole point maybe one of the bigger changes i've made to the deck it's unfortunate that the rank seven engine is like dead because a rise heart is banned deservedly so by the way uh, but there was a lot of really cool stuff you could do with the deck but you know you just can't really do it now uh, but you know at the very least i feel like uh, you don't really have to expand on this little engine. It can just kind of be what it is. Three copies of Droll, two copies of Ash, and then I do run Cyframe Gear Gamma. Again, this is another, like, huge hit. This deck has just been hit, like, so hard by, like, the Math Mech stuff, the Cyframe stuff. A Rise Heart was, like, a huge hit to this uh, deck the way I was playing it. But you do want to run one because your power card is Onomatopera, and your opponent's definitely going to want to Ash that. It's, like, almost always... It is like the number one point of interaction for the deck. Your opponent will most likely see you discard one card, think, see you're going to add two cards, and they're going to hit Ash. So that's really the whole point. That's why you run Gamma. It's worth it, definitely. It's also just a really good card. You know, if you see it, it's really good. Now, there is a brick, and it is what it is, um, but I think it's worth playing personally. Uh, Therian King Regulus. Uh, this card is good. The one like weakness of the deck forever was Omni Gates, and it's like a cool little weird way to get around it. Um, it involves the Spriggans engine, and you'll see it in the gameplay here in a second after I do this, but there is a, Spr a gigantic XYZ monster, and that's why you have to run Spriggans Rocky. It is a level 4 technically, but that's obviously just not very good. Uh, but the whole idea, obviously, okay, uh, is that you go into the Spriggans XYZ, uh, you send the level 4, you overlay on top the champion Sargus, and then you can search Ther Therian King Regulus and attach the Rocky from the graveyard. There's just no normal way to get a machine in the graveyard. This is like a warrior-based deck. Um, so, yeah, just know that that's like this interaction. This card's just really important because if your opponent has evenly matched, like it just sucks to lose the evenly matched when you have all this like interruption on your board, like Hope Harbinger and F-Zero, and you just lose to one trap card. So that's why I think this card is really important to play. Uh, Gigantis, uh, this is a just a generic level 4 extender. It can be searched with Gallic Granite. Heroic ch uh, Challenger, Morningstar. So I used to run like this huge package, but yeah, like I used to run three of the Searcher and then the Monster Reborn and then three of these, obviously. I still have the three of these, the Morningstar, and I have Heroic Call 2, but I don't run Knuckle anymore. It's just a level 2 that stinks when you see it in your hand, you know. I was just trying to get rid of some of these cards that just kind of suck to see uh, and this is like one of my options for that so i like took those out because really i guess at the end of the day knuckle was just a level four or yeah a level four extender and cashmere uh cashier fenrir does the same exact thing uh one copy of gaga got coats one copy of onomata pia and then i guess i'll just put this here uh one copy of gaga got child gaga got child is another one of those weird ones but the end of the day this is just a kind of a casual deck and i think there is like a hard ceiling in the way that this is built uh, and you're just like naturally going to see some like pretty weird hands but the whole idea and the reason why i run this like everything goes to on a pair obviously it's the card you want to see if you normal summon this you activate the effect it's an imperm magnet which is the entire point like you want to you want to save you know you don't want your opponent to imperm you at the wrong time because your opponent's going to see uh, you know four cards in your hand most likely in this effect to special summon three from your hand so your opponent may think oh let me just imperm this and he won't be able to do anything he's done he uses normal summon he doesn't have any more level four bodies but this special summons itself from the hand and so does this so if your opponent imperms this it's literally a wasted card it does nothing for them and it's pretty cool i mean that's the reason why i run run this like kind of 
awkward card, Dog I Got Child. Two copies of Ascended Sage, so you don't want to see this in Fenrir, obviously, and just generally this is not a card you want to see too often. I mean, it gets special summon from the deck anyways. Uh, you could run it at one, but it's you can't see it in your hand and only run one. It's kind of the problem, so I do run it at two now, uh, and I think it's kind of worth it. This is kind of a card that I'm like flip-flopping on. It's kind of unfortunate. There's no real easy way to get a rank four body on the board for free. It kind of requires a lot of setup. So Astral Topia is a free special summon, and it does search you cards like Onomata Pickup and Onomata Para. But unfortunately, like these cards are useless after you use your normal summon. So it's kind of been a weird spot. It does search you Numbers Protect, which is a really, really, like really good card. So it's kind of situational. I don't know how I feel about it, to be honest with you. I mean, it's unfortunate that this requires two or more warriors, and because I'm pretty sure that the Kashtira monster, like the only like literal warrior monster, is this card right here, Rise Heart. It is a warrior, which is important. Yeah, but this is a psychic, so that kind of stinks. It is running at three now, but I don't know. It's kind of kind of weird. Yeah, the rest of them are psychics. That's kind of what I thought. It is what it is, you know. Uh, one copy of Butter Spy. I know it seems kind of weird, but I do run Reinforcement of the Army, so you kind of are running two. And, yeah, I kind of wish Reinforcement of the Army was at three. <laughs> you know, like, it would make this deck so much better. I would, like, actually, like, build the entire deck differently uh, if it was. I mean, I guess I kind of understand why it's limited, but not really, kind of. But I do... This is, like, a really important card. Like, just having that extra body on the board, it works with Morningstar really well. In fact, I've thought about like maybe even like dropping an extra copy of Astral Topia and putting in Butter Spy, so you kind of have three copies. So that's like really something you're going to turn into. Like even if you could, you know, like go and like have a Rise Heart on the board and like Butter Spy in hand, like then you're like really like setting yourself up in a pretty good spot because then Morning Star can like immediately be used. It's just one of those things. Galaxy Cyclone. So this is a card that you attach to your Photon Lord. And it's pretty good interruption. I mean, it could be good. Your opponent has a face down card. It's literally just, you know, a one for one, which can be huge, uh, depending on what it is, of course. And then also, it kind of gets rid of those weird floodgates and field spells, right? And when you attach it, you know, you detach it, it destroys the monster. And now you kind of have another interruption in the graveyard that could really come up, especially against something like Fire King. Heroic Call, uh, this is Utopia Force, three copies of Onomatopera. Three copies of Prada Prosperity. This is one of those like big changes I've made to the deck, uh, for sure. Reinforcement of the Army, I talked about that. Called by the Grave. You know, the, the weakness of this deck, obviously, is Nibiru. And it is what it is. You know, like, sometimes you're just going to lose to Nibiru. I feel like uh, if I focus too much on warping my deck to play around that and playing Crossout, then, like, Crossout will just lose me duels as many as it does, you know, win me one. Three copies of Pickup. This searches your Onomatopoeia. It also searches your Onomatopoeia, which is very important, too, if you already have Onomatopoeia in your hand. And then I talked about Numbers Protect. So I've kind of, like, the biggest changes to the deck, I guess, are, like, our Prada Prosperity, the fact that you have, like, nine going second cards now. And it does kind of work. I mean, you're definitely going to break every once in a while. There's a lot of these weird, awkward one-ofs, but let's say statistically speaking, like, you're going to see the cards that you want, like, pretty often. And hopefully you can see that in the gameplay videos in just a second. But I do run one copy of Omega. You know, if you activate Automata Para and then you activate, they, you know, they Ash you, you activate Gamma. You know, you're just getting two cards out of your opponent's hands and you're going to have like a bunch of interruption, which is obviously very good. And it also like still works with Cash Tier Fenrir, right? Because you can go for Omega and then Special Summon Fenrir. Fenrir can search Rise Heart. And then suddenly you're off to the races. Like really, really well. You're in such a good spot at that point. Zeus, no surprises there. Okay, uh, there's like definitely there's two different ways you can get multiple stack Zeus. So after you spent your Sargus, you know that's one way to get Zeus. And also Utopia is also a two mat Zeus, you know by itself. The extra deck is a little bit tight, at least the way that I play it. Uh, this is Dragonar. Okay, this goes along with Utopia and then the Utopia Prime. And then here are my copies of Hope Harbinger and Photon Lord. Right, just generic. Spell and Monster Negates. I already talked about these two. Gallic Granite searches Gigantis. I don't know. This I guess this is just like really one of those flex spots that you can go for. Tornado Dragon, but you know, Tornado Dragon's obviously pretty good. It can it can come up a lot depending on the matchup. It's like pretty good against Branded, especially if your opponent ends up like going second and then they activate the fusion and graveyard to set a spell and trap. You know, before they get to use it, you can just pop that card. It's come up a few times, besides the fact that every other deck, you know, probably uses spells and traps too. 
Etopic Sage just searches out and gives you an Ascended Sage. Exciton Knight. So this is like kind of a way to condense your Zeus engine in a way. Because if you're going second, your opponent's most likely going to have a lot of cards in their hand, naturally. So Exciton Knight can activate first. And if your opponent imperms it, then you attack and you go into Zeus. So it's kind of like you are running two Zeuses without running like a big Zodiac package or something like that. And then F0. Side deck isn't really too important. I do run a couple of side frame cards. Uh, it can't come up, uh, definitely. Especially if your opponent's playing like a trap deck. They're probably going to start activating stuff in the draw phase. so this is, um, Or like during their turn, especially if you're playing Labyrinth. And, you know, you can negate that and then also go into something like side frame Omega. So it, it can come up for sure. And if your opponent is playing Branded, you know, you want to have those extra copies to stop Branded Fusion, naturally. Just cards like that. Evenly Mash, Dark Ruler, Lightning Storm, Nibiru. You know, those are just regular cards. Okay, so let's jump over to a few replays here. This is against, <clears throat> geez, this is against Centurion. And this is a pretty good opening. Okay, I do have Prada of Prosperity as well. Let's see what I get. You know, it's funny, like, <laughs> normally Automata Para gives you all these cards, but, it, like, just over the course of this turn, naturally, I guess, I acquired them. So it's kind of like I had... Pay Automata pair in my hand. And this is full combo. So every single like thing on your board, every monster zone is going to be filled with an interruption, which is kind of neat, I guess. It's kind of like a combo player's dream. You know, that can go into the prime. And now I can go into Dragonar, giving myself my first interruption. It should always be Hope Harbinger first, right? Because of those quick play spells. You don't want to have Photon Lord. It doesn't really do anything in the standby in the draw phase normally. And then there we go, I can go for Regulus. And this works out really well, because any time a monster, uh, an XYZ monster detaches a material, which of course you can do at any time because this is a quick effect, you can now trigger this. And this card destroys or returns to the hand, so it's very flexible. And you have a lot of interruption. This is an Omni Negate, Spell Negate, this is a monster negate that takes, which that zone will be open after Regulus. And then Photon Lord, which is a monster negate that uh, also puts, you know, the cyclone in your graveyard. So if your opponent has a face up spell and trap, you're kind of off to the races. Uh, okay, so let's also go into Fallen Valbaz. Probably about the same thing here. And I think you get to see the cash tier engine in full effect. So I can search Rise Heart because it's a free warrior monster. And pretty much you're going to see the exact same end port. He does go for the Imperm, like I said, it is Imperm Magnet. It's like almost too tempting for your opponent to see that you can special summon like three monsters from your hand, thinking that they'll stop you when in fact obviously does nothing. And once your opponent has four cards in hand and every single part of your board is going to be filled with interruption, you know, you got to feel pretty confident. And even though you have Cash Tier Fenrir, which is obviously just like generally a good thing, you know, you're, you're going to be one zone short because you're going to have so much on the board. But the good thing is, is that this is a quick effect, obviously. So as soon as you use your Therian King Regulus, you know, you can just activate Dragonar afterwards. So yeah, same end board, but now I have Fenrir on top. I have Ashen Hand too, which I guess is kind of cool. You know, the one worry, of course, always, is that your opponent has Dark Ruler no more. But, you know, like I said, there's obviously like a very clear, you know, ceiling to this deck. You can go ahead and go for Ash. He's going to try to use Cross Out. I have the Nami Negate. Still have other interruption. Still have the Sargus uh, interruption. Still have Dragonar, and that's kind of neat. Uh, and this is against Trap Tricks. This will be the last one that I do. Again, this seems like kind of a weird opening, but you know, this is where I kind of feel like Butter Spy is like really important, to be honest with you, in a really weird way. I'm gonna have to do some like pretty strange stuff, and I I should have sent Gigantis and kept my Droll. I played this really weird, but the end board ends up being pretty decent, and I think this showcases how good Numbers Protect is. I guess Gigantis is follow-up, um, but I do have three interruptions, you know, Monster, a Spell Negate, and then Numbers Protect. So he did have Evenly Match, so that kind of worked out that I had the Astral in hand. He also had a Kaiju, but, you know, Trap Tricks going second is obviously just, like, not great. Like, I feel like their power play going second sometimes is, like, I don't know, like, Evenly Match obviously just has to do a lot of work. And then you, like, once the ball gets rolling, it is good, but if you don't do anything, like, if you, it kind of almost reminds me of Psyframe in a really weird way, where as long as you don't do anything, like, you can just, like, keep chugging along. Yeah, Numbers Protect sets itself when they get rid of a number monster. <coughs> so he just kind of gave me another form of interruption. I was going to go into the Sargus uh, and then, like, have Therian King Regulus as the Omni Negate. 
Uh, but, you know, he did ash that, and I guess I just, you know, you can just pivot into F0. And I think this is just the end of the duel, so... I mean, I'm playing this in, like, Platinum and Omega, and I know that's not really worth anything, but to show you that at the very least, like, you can get out of the lower levels of people who are trying to win matches. <laughs> like, I just, again, that sounds like a weird thing to say, but I'm just trying to showcase that this isn't the worst deck in the world. Like, you can play this at a fairly high level. You can steal games against any deck because you're just putting up so much interruption that your opponent can't do anything, and your opponent's not familiar with it. And they will waste their imperms on your, you know, your automat cards when they shouldn't things like that but i love this deck it's one of my favorite decks to play it's probably something i'm gonna spruce up and play in real life now that pot of prosperity is an affordable card and you know just kind of have that be my fun rogue deck uh, that i play in real life but let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below other than that's going to do it for today's video and i will see you guys next time